Welcome. Today we're going to look at three XLR preamps, the Juiced Link Riggy Micro, the Sound Devices MP1, and the Zoom H5, which is also a recorder as well. If you'd like to cut right to the chase and skip all of the, you know, testing and, and what everything sounds like, go ahead and check my uh, video description box and I've got links to everything, to every little section if you just wanna go straight to a certain section of this video. At the end of the video, I'll give a quick rundown of the strengths and weaknesses of each preamp. I'll also let you know which one that I went with and my personal opinions on the matter. Otherwise, stay tuned. We'll be looking at three major aspects of each preamp. And factor number one is gonna be the preamp amp limiter. Uh, we're going to walk each uh, amp through a peaking phase and see how well it does. I'm also going to record a lav mic in addition to the channel that I'm recording um, the limiter on to see, you know, for consistency, to see what it actually is supposed to sound like, what the waveform wave is supposed to look like when it's not peaking. So we can look at that as well. So we're now testing the H5's limiter. I've got the fan on, I've got AC on, my fridge is on. I don't have all my soundproofing up. I'm just looking for limiting. I have a second lav mic into a separate channel just to give us a baseline so I can compare waveforms and see where things are clipping or if they're not sounding quite right, um, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna normalize things in post to give it a better um, sound and I'll go back and forth between them and I'll show you on the screen so you guys know what you're listening to. So it should be a pretty good test. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is rather than like scream at the mic, um, because what I found is when you scream at the mic, you sound weird and it kind of sounds like clipping even though it's not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the input till, till we get to a point where we're clipping. And so I'm gonna keep increasing, increasing, increasing. So right now my Zoom H5 is telling me that I'm clipping. Okay, it's it's giving me the, the little blinky noise, but I'm not going past zero. So I'm gonna go just a little more notch further. So we're gonna go into the seven range. We're at seven right now. And it's doing, a, you know, it's probably trying to keep my voice from clipping. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go a little bit further. We're now at eight. So we for sure must be clipping right now. We must be losing some information, I'm assuming. Um, I'm thinking so. All right, so I think we're done with that one. All right, so now we're testing the juice link. It's got a stereo signal coming into the H5, and I'm going to basically keep increasing um, the volume until we clip. And the thing about the juice link is it gives a negative 16 dB pad to a second channel. So it's using the left, right, it's using a stereo signal. The left channel is the strong one. The right channel is gonna be a negative 16 dB pad. For my tests around the house and just with my kids and just uh, on a few jobs, it pretty much, you're not gonna clip that. If, unless like a train drives by and blasts an air horn, which, you know, that's not even something you would wanna record unexpectedly. You'd be prepared for that. So <coughs> things like coughing are useful to, uh, to not clip if you actually want the cough to be in let's say a narrative film or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the volume, increasing the volume, increasing the volume. And uh, I'm at a point where I'm like barely clipping. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase um, the amount on the H5 so that we are just like completely clipped. So we're gonna keep going, keep going. Um, oh, I'm not increasing the right one. We're gonna keep going, keep going, keep going. So um, right now I am just like completely clipped. I am like, all the way clipped on the left channel. I mean, my left channel has been clipped for a long time. Um, and so every time I talk, I'm clipping. So this should be a pretty good test. We'll compare the waveforms. I'm gonna match up the waveforms of the lav mic so we kind of get a very similar reading here. Yep, and there we go. So we're completely clipping the left channel of the juice link. Uh, the right channel is peaking at around negative 12, ne negative six, depending on how loud I am. And the lav mic is matching pretty similar to the uh, right channel of the juice link. So this should be a pretty good test. All right, let's move on. All right, so here's the issue with this next test. The MP1 does not have a limiter that basically just kicks on at a certain time. It, it kicks on when you clip to a certain uh, decibel range, okay, to, to a certain volume. So the problem is I can't just increase the gain to get to a point where I'm clipping. I have to uh, exponentially increase my volume that's going being put in input based on the setting that it's at. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, get this microphone a little bit closer and I'm going to go ahead and normalize my speech and I'm going to increase the volume of my speech um, 
very, I'm not going to scream, but I'm just going to increase the volume until I'm clipping and hitting the limiter. So I have to basically look down and make sure the limiter is on and the light's on, and I'm not clipping my lav so that I get a good signal to, you know, compare. So this would be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my lav down to like a 4 or 3. So, uh, yeah. So basically I'm going to increase my voice, going to increase my voice. My limiter is now working. My limiter is now working. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. The limiter is working. It's working. It's it's basically uh, blinking. It's blinking pretty dang good. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and increase the volume just a little bit. Testing, 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 testing. And our limiter is activating. Um, and, you know, our lav mic is at negative 12. And it seems like the limiter is keeping the signal at negative 6, which is pretty interesting. Anyway... All right, so back to our normal listening levels. Okay, so I think that was pretty cool. So I'm curious to see what the results are. All right, so now that I've had a chance to listen to the sound and also look at the waveform, there's a few things going on here. One, uh, you know, the Zoom does not have a pro true line in. Even if you convert it to a quarter jack into one of the XLR uh, combo jacks, it doesn't uh, have the line in. So. So I had to use an attenuator and I tried different, you know, levels to lower the level, you know, to kind of match things up. So here's the problem. You can't bypass the Zoom's preamps. And because the Zoom's preamps, you know, amp the signal coming in, the uh, MP1 doesn't know where the clipping is going to be. So, you know, you match things up, you lower things down. And you make sure that when you're clipping on the MP1, you're not actually clipping the H5. But because of the signal mismatch, even then you get this weird distortion sometimes when it's uh, limiting and it just doesn't quite sound right. And there's really no solution from what I understand. This is just a mismatch and, you know, we'll talk about this later though. Factor number two is going to be the signal to noise ratio, or in other words, how clean are these preamps? Okay, so this is the Zoom H5. I'm peaking at about negative 12 dB. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure right here. And from the end of the microphone to my mouth is 14 inches. Uh, we've got to have this thing at about five. It's already at five and we're 14 inches away. So you can imagine how much more boost we're going to need when we move this thing further away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you listen to the room noise. Um, which is really not that helpful because this room's gonna be different than where you're recording. And then I'm gonna unplug the mic and you'll hear just the amp, what it sounds like, okay? So listening now. All right, we're gonna unplug the, uh, the mic. All right, so now we're listening to the sound devices MP1. Uh, I'm running the MP1 into the Zoom 5. Um, the H5 is, is at about two and a half. You have to crank the preamp up to about two and a half just to get the, the sound devices just to be able to pass through the preamp and it just kind of work. So we'll talk about that later, but yeah, we're peaking at about negative 12. So let's go ahead and listen to the room noise. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this thing so you can actually hear what the preamp and everything sounds like. Here's the juice link peaking at negative 12, and I was able to actually use the stereo in, um, which for some reason the preamp allows you to bring it down to like one and still record. So the juice link's doing all the heavy lifting. Let's go ahead and listen to the room. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this, this guy. While the H5 does have more preamp noise, it's completely negligible and not even audible. We did this test again. Now you can already hear the difference. You're hearing a lot more of the room. Um, Mike's having to work a lot harder. So we are about 48 inches away, four feet. So this is the H5, going directly to H5, H5 is powering, amping. I had to boost it up to a six, so you don't really even have to boost it a ton more but it is working a lot harder to get the same levels. So testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. All right, let's go ahead and listen to the room. And I'll pull the mic out so you can hear the preamps. All right, so this is the sound devices MP1 at four feet away. I'm having to use almost all of the gain on the sound devices, but I'm able to keep the Zoom H5 uh, really low. This is about as far as I'd ever go with a shotgun mic, so we're pretty much putting this to the max, the test. Anyway, let's listen to the room. 
All right, and I'm going to unplug and we'll see if you can hear some of the preamp noise. All right, so now we're listening to the juice link uh, peaking at negative 12 again. And I've now maxed out the juice link and I've had to bump the AH5 up just a little bit. It's still below two, which is just fine. So anyway, let's go ahead and listen to the room. All right, and I'm gonna disconnect the mic so that we can hear just the amps. Factor number three, we're gonna look at the usability, functionality, form factor, features, things like that, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and start with the Zoom H5, which is the recorder I'm using right now. So some of the things that I love about this thing, one, it's a recorder and a preamp, okay? Um, two, um, it's clean enough to use in most cases for most people, okay? So for me, you know, I use an Anti-G3 right now. It's my shotgun mic they use for most of my shotgun applications. I use LAVs, which don't require a lot of amping. And even if, you know, you do have something like the Rode Filmmaker kit and you're doing wireless stuff, it's gonna have amps built in. I can't, you know, amp that anyway with either of the other two amps. Um, and even if you're gonna run a LAV, which I actually did a test with LAVs. I ran them through all the different things and I just didn't find any reason to even implement that or show you guys any of that. But yeah, so you've got that covered. Um, two, this thing is versatile. So I can record, you know, four channels at one time. It records, you know, each input separately and as a separate file. So if someone clips on one channel or someone is wrestling their shirt while someone else is talking, it's not going to affect that at all. Right. As far as, you know, form factor, it's, re it's, re it's relatively small. You can take off the top, which is what I've done here. It does have a line out and a headphone monitoring, which the H4N does not have a line out and headphone monitoring. Um, it, you can actually charge this thing off of a uh, battery, like a uh, 20,000 milliamp, you know, battery that you have lying around. Um, you know, really, really awesome. You got separate headphone monitoring, you know, separate from the, uh, the stuff being recorded. So, I mean, overall, it uses SD cards, uses double A's. Double A's are big because you can use rechargeable double A's and just keep those things running for days. Um, it's got battery monitoring. I mean, this thing is, this thing is everything, right? So the issue that you run into with one of these is, is limiting, is the limiter. This thing, for all I'm concerned with, doesn't have a limiter. So what I'm basically going to use is I'm going to use the juice link when I need a limiter or when I want to go directly into camera and I don't want to deal with a separate SD card or separate files and structure and all that. Like say I'm recording a very long concert, I'm recording run and gun type stuff, or I'm recording, you know, a corporate event where people are talking for hours on end and I just don't want to deal with all the separate files. It's unnecessary, right? But one thing you can do, you can still do dual stage audio. You can still run this into the stereo mic cable. You have one of these little mini jacks, right? Run that into the, on the side of the H5N, the, the stereo mic that comes with it. You can plug in and boom, you've got stereo left, right, and you've got it recording on the H5, and you can also send it back over to the camera via the line out. You can also put a DB pad on the line out coming out of the H5 or the H4N, and it will actually look fine on your camera, turn your camera's mic input all the way down, and you've got two copies. So if you're doing something really important that you cannot lose, that you need two copies, and you want the limiter, the 16 decibel limiter, this is the way to go. There's no other option. So let's talk about the Juice Link. It's got two XLR inputs. Um, fan of power, uh, battery door. Um, the thing that I don't like about it is it's, it's using the nine volts, which is annoying. They're kind of expensive. If I want to go and buy rechargeables, I got to buy, you know, an entire set of, of rechargeable nine, nine volts with a chargeable charger, which I don't have. Everybody has double A's, you know, so, you know, the H5 uses double A's, sound device use double A's, you know, uh, road filmmaker kit uses double A's. My flashes use double A's. Everything is double A, right? So that's kind of annoying. Um, usability, you know, it's got all these buttons and all this stuff here on the bottom. At first, it was a little bit overwhelming trying to figure all this stuff out. I looked at a few guides, took me about five minutes to figure out. I've set up everything the way I'm gonna use it like 99% of the time. Every once in a while, I might click on between one channel with a backup or two channel and mixing or whatever, right? So that's 
you know, pretty simple. Uh, fan and power options and all that kind of stuff. It does have a lot of mounting options. So you can mount this thing, you know, uh, on top of the camera, on the bottom of the camera, in between the tripod and the camera, on a side of a, you know, uh, rig or whatever, right? I mean, this thing is, is pretty versatile. It's small metal body um, knobs are a little bit small and kind of you know they are precise like you can really feel a difference between each little gradation but it's they're not like the knobs on the h5 which are very easy to move and and adjust you know they're just bigger right it's just easier to dial and things in dial things in um yeah, you know, it, it does have a low battery indicator, but it doesn't have like an actual battery indicator that tells you exactly what your battery level is like. Uh, if you're like me, you just you, you, you put fresh batteries in everything you use and you change them out when you, when you get a chance, even if you don't need to. That's just the way I, I roll. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, locking XLR connectors. H5 does not have locking XLR connectors. It's so freaking annoying. So annoying. So there's that. Um, now onto the sound devices. If you use this thing properly, the way it's supposed to be used, it's fine. But for my use and for probably everyone who's watching, this is just, this thing is like pretty much useless for most people that are watching and for me. And I'll tell you why. One, okay, like let's just look at the actual form factor in the, in the design of this thing. I mean, this thing is all metal. It's, it is the best built product here by a long shot. I mean, even the battery compartment has like O-rings, you know, and it's like sealed off so you don't get water con condensation, whatever in there. It's got locking connections. Everything is really simple. All of the, the, the buttons are really solid. Uh, the, this is just a solid freaking pe piece of equipment. As far as form factor, it's got no way of like mounting this anything. It's got no holes for mounting. You basically have to dangle this thing, you know, with these little holes, which they don't, they don't give you anything for this, um, from a tripod or from a mic stand or wherever your mixing location is, you can just set it down, I guess. You know, what would you use this thing for? If you had a pro level mixing board on a film set or something like that, and you need to run a line level signal, a true line level signal to that thing, uh, over say a long stretch, like a 60 foot stretch, or say you got like a podium or something like that, this is the device that'll do it with with a very good quality and it's got built in limiters that can work with a pro level mixer where you can do test tones and all kinds of stuff, right? This thing can't send out a test tone. But, um, but yeah, so that would be useful. For me, it's not useful not being able to, to set where you're gonna peak. Um, it has a peak where it'll peak at a certain you know, dynamic range difference between where it's set depending on how it's amped. But that doesn't mean that the H5 is going to respond to that and and, and this thing's going to peak before the H5 peaks, before, you know, wherever it's being sent. Because this thing requires a recorder. It's not a recorder. So that, that that's the mismatch. So the problem is there's no dials, no, there's no... Um, there's no display telling you where you're at or when you're about to peak. There's just simply a little light that, that goes on when the limiter triggers. So with a recorder like an H5 or most prosumer recorders that are under three grand, okay, they don't actually bypass preamps. So on the H5, you have to activate the preamp to a one or a two or whatever to get this thing to even pick it up, which messes with the dynamic range and messes with the levels and what this thing this thing thinks is peaking. Um, you know, I used attenuators, okay? I went online and people told me, you know, you, you don't have a true line level signal going into a, the H5. So you either have to go quarter jack in, which that apparently is line level, but it's actually not. It's prosumer line level, which is different. I did an attenuator, so I've got the ability to go do, to do a negative 40 dB pad, negative 30, negative 20, which is stupid to me to take a hot signal and then reduce it all the way down, amp up a hot, really super hot signal, and then bring it all the way down. Just, it's it's counterintuitive. So, uh, and it messes with everything. But what people don't realize is the, a the H5, you have to activate those preamps and you have to amplify things on the H5 side so you can't just avoid them. So the juice link is actually more with what I need. I need to do all the heavy lifting, minor adjustments, minor adjustments. So that's form factor, features, usability. So, so what am I gonna go with? I'm gonna go with the AH5 like 99% of the time. If I'm doing something where I cannot monitor audio and I really don't wanna clip and I know someone's kind of emotional and all over the place and up and down or I'm recording music that's gets loud and soft and loud and soft and stuff like that, I'm gonna use the Juice Link for a single channel person, you know, speaking. Um, or if I have a, a mic that's really hard to drive 
I would use the juice link, which I don't have any mics that are hard to drive. The labs are not hard to drive. The, the shotguns are hard to drive. And if it is hard to drive, you got it so far away that it doesn't even matter because you're going to pick up everything else. So as I explained earlier, but um, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm basically going to send the sound devices back and... I paid for this thing, and I'm freaking frustrated because I thought this was going to be the bad man pajama. Because Sound Devices makes some great products, and if you know, if you want to spend more than three thousand dollars on a three-channel mixer input preamp recorder, Sound Devices is the way you want to go. But until then, uh, this is just not the right tool for the job. And I don't really, I, even in a professional world, I don't really understand where this would be used or why you would need this. Hence why there's like no videos on this thing and I haven't been able to find anything about it. So, but it's, it is a real shame because this thing is, could be, it's just right on the edge. It could be so useful for me, but it's not. So I hope this was helpful. And if, if you want, check out the description box, go through all the different things, skim through the video or just watch it and I'll, and you'll basically find out more information. But in a nutshell, um, that kind of sum, sums everything up. I look forward to bringing you guys more content if you're into the sound, video, audio world. I'll see you at the next video.